Hello everybody. So, three months after we moved out, we are just starting to move back into the office, into the main studio. Not even my dog, oh my God. Right, now, so I have got a couple of special guests here and they have promised to respect social distancing. So, let's get stuck in. <sighs> Hello office. So we're here, socially distanced filming set up and special guest. So we have John Williams and Steven Spielberg. John, very good to bring your friend Steve. Hang on, hang on. You boys promise to respect social distancing. That's not two meters. Well, I don't ever, th I don't look at numbers and I don't think about numbers. I don't care if you're not a numbers person, two meters it is. So please boys, come on. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the numbers don't matter to me? You stay like that. A-list celebrities, I don't know. Right, into the studio. So my friends, we are set up. We have got everything turned on and we are back in the main studio. Now, what I thought we'd look at today, uh, while my two friends are outside, um, is an yet another really low cost libraries uh, from um, Spitfire. Um, they're 29 pounds each, they're called Spitfire Originals, and it goes like this, look, um, if you uh, go onto the website and you see it, you will find a page dedicated to this. And they have felt piano, cinematic percussion, epic brass and woodwind, and epic strings. And they're all £29 each. Now, £29 doesn't strike me as a bad deal at all, particularly as the strings and the woodwind come from uh, the original Albion 1. And Albion 1 was really good, and lots of people paid lots of money for Albion 1. And what you're getting here is the sort of the heart of the matter. You're getting the kind of uh, distilled essence, the stuff actually people use most of, uh, which was the uh, strings of woodwind. And so what I thought we'd do, um, to, you know, to be absolutely, I've, I've had these in my, uh, my locker for a while, and I hadn't actually played with them. And I'm surprised. I thought, oh, <laughs> what a nice surprise. Here's something I didn't even know I had. So look, what we're going to do is we're going to look at these. Um, I've just got... Um, uh, here we go. It comes, the big difference between Albion and this is the Albion obviously worked in contact and this comes in its own little player. It the now familiar um, Spitfire player. So what you get, here's the string one, you get uh, live, which is a sort of, uh, which, which switches as you play between um, a different uh, um, what do you call it, articulations. Longs, longs with um, um, mutes, a short, short ostinato, pizzicato, etc., 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 all that. And then there's a, uh, I'm just using the brass and the woodwind and the strings today. Um, so here we go, here's the brass one, you get uh, long, short, and long and short for the uh, woodwinds. What more do you want? you got long and short. <laughs> for 29 quid. Okay, so look, what we're going to do is we're going to write a little tiny piece, uh, a micro piece, <laughs> I think we'll see. Uh, and um, we're doing it in Logic. Um, I haven't worked in Logic for ages, so it may all go horribly wrong. Because what you tend to do, if you work in more than one um, piece of software, you remember all the shortcuts from the last one, and you go, ah! and you push one button and something very unexpected happens. So we'll see. We'll see if this is actually what's going to happen. Right. Okay, let's... Um, string ostinato. Okay. I, I'm going to do... Uh, le okay, let me talk to you through the... Comp composition is a very crap way of saying messing about with samples. Okay. Right. Okay, so I'm going to start with this little rhythm, this little ostinato, basically working around a C minor chord. Look, here's C, E flat and G, C minor. 
So I'm going to the fifth of the third. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Very common pattern that. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. They're not triplets, these are eighth notes. Okay, if I do that, I don't do, do I'm going from C minor to that is actually A flat, but in the first inversion. In other words, first inversion is where you put the third in the bass. So a good technique, which um, we will uh, refer to um, uh, in the music theory course quite a lot, is, is this thing called voice leading, where you're trying to make each if you imagine these being kind of like um, violins one and two, what would the line look like? How smooth, how much sense does that line make? How well do you connect your chords together? Because the more you connect your chords together, the better the chord progression is going to sound. So therefore, if we go from... We've gone from C minor to A flat. Uh, Then I'm going to go to a B. Let's what's B flat, and then if I slide these two down to there, I get F first inversion. Look, there's F, F A C. If I put the A in the bass, so I've got a four chord loop. I've got a simple four chord loop which goes like this. <laughs> it's not even eight o'clock in the morning. I don't, I'll live with that. <laughs> okay, right. Are we ready? Yes, that went all right. That went all right. Uh, so we've done our... Let's um, quantize these. Turn on quantize eighth notes. See what happens. Uh, let's loop that. I'll live with that. Very nice. Oh, nice. It's all right a bit derivative. So I'm now going to copy this out a few times. Uh, now, second time in, uh, we're going to introduce a string line. Now, with the string line, what we've got to bear in mind is the chord progression. Okay, I can't just kind of do noodle around. Uh, I can't noodle around at all. These are the longs. So I'm going to start. If, so I've got to think. Okay, I've got C minor to start with. Then it goes to A flat. Then B flat. Then F. But I might not just want to walk through a bass line, which just does. I'm going to try and come up with a little sort of counter melody which works with uh, that chord progression. Okay, let's see what happens. I'm going to let it go once through by itself. Except, <laughs> uh, you idiot guy, you can't play a single, all I had to do was play C, C with this finger or that finger, that thumb, and I can't do it correctly. I apologise. If this is your thing and you want to know a little bit more about how to write music or indeed um, music theory, <laughs> I just happen to have a course which is going to help you. Learn music theory. It's fun, practical, and packed with clear explanations. A video course that will show you how music really works. Pitch, keys, and scales, chord progressions, and written notation, all explained in a clear, easy to understand way. Learn music theory. Quick, practical, and fun. The way music theory should be. Right. Back to the action. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes things turn out all right. I ha I ha look, nobody's going to... What do we think John and Co are up to next door? What did I tell you to? Come on. Social I mean, distancing. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a numbers cruncher. I'm not a numbers person. That's bad. I know you're not a numbers guy. <sighs> I hated that day. What are they like? Right, where were we? <sighs> right. <laughs> Meanwhile, <sighs> it's like having kids in the house. Um. <laughs> I know what I'm going to do. That low brass, where I... OK, what's going on here? This bit here, you can see, first time through, I played a sort of cello line, viola line. Second time, I added a bass line, which did move more slowly. I wonder what happens if I then add the brass underneath that. Not bad, that'll do. Um, uh, okay, I'm now looking for, uh, I'm gonna quantize that in, there you go, because we, the reason I'm quantizing this more than anything else is because I need to, ah! That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I pushed a key which would have made perfect sense in Cubase and it just made my window disappear. I'm sorry. Okay, look, come on, guy. Don't mess about. We're sort of supposed to be writing a piece of music here. So we, okay. Um, so what are we doing? What's, okay, we've got those brass things going there. Sort of. Okay, what I was going to do is uh, scissors. There we go. Let's chop that off and then dupe that and ch mm, chop that off and dupe that. Is that going to work? Okay, so what now? What now with the dainty woodwind? Um, down here. Here we go. Let's open them up. Hello, my little friends. What have we got? We have live, long and short. <laughs> Live long. This one shouldn't be short. It should be prosper, shouldn't it? <laughs> oh, stupid. Don't be ridiculous. I'm sorry, it's still not 8 o'clock in the morning. What do you expect? Comedy gold before 8 o'clock in the morning? No. Okay. Now, what am I going to do? The top line's going... I could just double it, but that might... Or I could go... That is quite good. Now, what's happening there? What's happening is the top line's going. I'm, so I'm on the woodwind. I'm going the C and E flat. So that's fine. That's C minor. Then the strings go to this A minor first, A, A flat first inversion. But the woodwind was going to that, C and F, which turns that not into A minor first inversion. Well, it's, it either turns it into A sixth, or it turns it more prob probably into F minor seven. Look, F minor with a seven on the top. So you see, this is how sometimes your inner parts, you add an extra note, and it totally changes the harmonic flavor of what you're playing. Right, let's go back to the beginning.
Okay. Um, so it's going. Then I go to this. Uh, this is B flat sus two. So there is the B flat chord. What I'm playing is that D and the C together. So that is the second. So it resolves down. So you've got the second in there. And then it goes to um, the F. That sounds all right. Well, I think it sounds all right. Uh, I could be wrong, but hmm, I'm still not sure. I'm still not sure what this top line, what top line, if any, we're going to have. <gasps> While you're here, have I mentioned this thing about subscribing to this channel? You haven't subscribed yet. What are you thinking of? Look, just click the subscribe and bell thing and then you'll know when we do stuff like this. Okay, let me just... Uh, I'm going to have a second line of la... Uh, uh, okay, so we got... isn't the worst tune I've ever come up with. Um. It's right off the edge of your screen, I know. So we're going... I just Sus4, resolving upwards. So this is C minor. The first chord is C minor. So we're going... So uh, the tune is describing a um, C sus four chord. Then it goes to the A flat, and as this rises to the E flat, that's playing the fifth of the e flat, A flat chord, or F, or whatever we decided it was. Then it goes up to the B flat. So it's starting on the second, but we've already in the woodwinds got that sus2 going on, so... Job done. quid that is really not half bad is it I mean it sounds great um, so and if I'd had the uh, the cinematic percussion which uh, is another one and you know that would have been really you know that would sort of filled it out made it great so look I, I mean, you know it's it just goes to show you um, that you don't have to spend an absolute double die fortune in order to get stuff which is really perfectly good I mean you've got a lot uh, you've got a lot of different flavours I mean we were just using longs and shorts which we could have done with uh, Spitfire Discover which is the free orchestra but there's Pizzicato and there's Consortino and there's, uh, there's tons of there's quite a lot of stuff in there and Albion 1 back in the day um, people would you know were paying lots and lots you know hundreds of pounds for they said, you know, and and, and it you know the full Albion one, which you can still buy, wi which you buy now. It you know has a great deal of uh, stuff in it. But um, the original one, you know, and these are great sounds. These are good sounds, you know, and it's fun and it's inspiring. So anyway, look, I just thought, you know, get back on the horse, get back in the studio, get it all rolling. At, uh, anyway, I better go and see what these two um, boys are doing outside, and uh, we will catch you later.